defendant caused the death of Timothy Ferguson. That is, Timothy Ferguson died as a result of starvation and or physical abuse, physical neglect and abuse. You heard Dr. DeYoung's testimony about the cause of death for Timothy here, and all you needed to do was look at the photograph to see how he died. And again, I wish I could have spared everybody from seeing those photographs, but I can't, because I have to prove, and this is why, I have to prove how he died. The defendant has one of these three states of mind. She intended to kill, she intended to do great bodily harm to Timothy Ferguson, or she knowingly created a very high risk of death or great bodily harm knowing that death or such harm would be the likely result of her actions. Let's talk about that first one for a moment. She intended to kill. I wish I could stand up here and tell you that I think she actually didn't have the intent to kill. I wish I could do that because the notion that you could starve a child to death intentionally over months and months, which is what it would take, I wish she didn't have that intent. I wish I didn't believe that she had that intent. And it's for you to decide whether or not she had that intent. But her actions sure show that she had that intent. If she wanted to kill Timothy, I wish she'd done it a lot faster than what she did. Because what he would have had to have gone through in those last few days or few weeks is unthinkable. But she had that intent to kill him. At a minimum, she had an intent to do him great bodily harm. And you can find either one. And even if you had struggle with finding that, she knowingly created a very high risk of death or great bodily harm, knowing that death or such harm would be the likely result of his actions. She, she made a situation so dangerous, so obviously dangerous to anyone, especially someone of her intelligence level, that death or great bodily harm was the likely result. Well, death was the result. Death was the result because of what she did to him. Because of the things that she directed to be done to him. On the stand yesterday, she tried to say, well, some of this was Paul's idea. Paul did this, and Paul did that, and Paul did this, and Paul did that. If you need to, feel free to review these text messages. If you want, you can review the bigger binder of text messages. Because these are all about Timothy as well. And when I say they're about Timothy, they're not about Timothy... You know, all the good things that he's done and all the good things we're going to do. It's all about the punishments. This is a small window. This is a larger window into the life, to the hell that Timothy's life was for the last six months. Every step of the way, her directing, her telling, her ordering, her threatening Paul to do the things. This was not on Paul. I told you in opening that you may not like Paul Ferguson. And I do believe that he is also in part responsible for Timothy's death here. But you had an opportunity to see Paul testify here. Did that, did that look like the mastermind behind this? Or did that look like, a, a, as he put it, somebody who was just desperate for attention, desperate for the love of his mother and doing the things that she wanted him to do? That's for you to decide. But I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that's what it was. That Paul was doing what she told him to do. Because he knew what was going to happen to him if he didn't do those things. 